Hello, this is Dave, W7UUU, and this video we're going to be covering the Westkit BN1 Novice Rig, which is a uh, cute little transmitter receiver that was designed by a company in Kearney, Nebraska, that was uh, catering to the new novice market. They were located in this building uh, in Kearney. They were an electronics distributor at the time and wanted to jump on board the uh, burgeoning novice license class market and create a little transmitter receiver for uh, brand new novices to get on the air with. It's a very basic uh, 80 and 40 meter transmitter and a regenerative receiver covering from 3.5 to uh, 8 megahertz. Runs on a single 3A5 tube and it's a cute little bugger. It's in a little about a six and a half inch uh, wide box. Um, all contained uh, in the in the same box and it's um, uh, battery powered only nine volt batteries I'm using here to get me to 45 volts for the receiver and a single one and a half volt battery for the tube filaments which is interesting because the tube is a three volt tube but we're only using one and a half volts and that's because the filament is split into two parts so uh, uh, it uh, operates the transmitter and the receiver separately and that causes some some kind of weirdness in, in how the unit operates um, in that the transmitter is on and then the receiver is on they're not on at the same time you're actually turning them on and off by using the transmit receive switch on the front so looking at the uh, basic schematic um, you'll see that the um, uh, schematic is broken up into the transmitter section here on the left and then there is the receiver section on the right and they're entirely separate. They don't share anything except the tube. There's the left part of the tube for the transmitter, and in this drawing, the right-hand side of the tube is for the receiver. And the really goofy part is that the transmit receive switch turns power on to one half of the filament to run the transmitter when you're in transmitting mode. Then you switch to receive, and you turn that off. And now you're turning on the receiver tube and putting power on that side of the tube to run that filament. So it, as you're going from transmit to receive with the switch, you're actually turning off the transmitter and then you're turning on the receiver to receive and then you turn the receiver off and you go back to the transmitter. So um, I can see lots of reasons that that would cause some instability. They also have on the schematic the wishful thinking of a three-foot uh, whip antenna base loaded mounted on the top of the radio which uh, I doubt would work very well uh, so what we uh, are going to do is play a short video here where you can actually hear it working first you'll be hearing a, a video of it receiving my friend uh, Jim W7VK who lives about three miles from me and um, I was able to tune him in very well on the receiver. Uh, this is the setup on my bench. There's my big clacky key. And um, I'm, I'm set up on the uh, uh, 80 meter band. The crystal is internal. It's at 3880 soldered inside, not plugged into the socket, with a little amplified speaker. And here's Jim. <laughs> That's not bad. Um, he's very close by, but a very strong signal, and that's just off my 80 meter dipole. Um, so next up, we're going to um, show you what it actually sounds like from the transmitter, transmitting uh, just being heard locally on my Collins receiver. The problem is that with only 45 volts on the plate, there's just micro, volt, micro watts of power that are uh, being output from the transmitter. So he was never able to hear me, uh, even though he has a pretty good antenna as well. So uh, in order to just hear the transmitter work, I just operated it locally and um, used my uh, dummy load transmitter onto the dummy load and then into my Collins 75A4. <laughs> So it has a very stable tone. It sounds really nice playing into the Collins receiver. And, you know, as I said, the receiver uh, in the, the West kit performs reasonably well considering how, how utterly simple 
um, the radio is. There's a lot of improvements they could have made, um, especially running the tube all the time so that you're not constantly turning one side off and the other side on. Um, there is a tube socket in uh, opening in the chassis. They were going to add another tube. I don't think they ever came out with an improved version, but it does look like they were prepared for that. The loading control on the front uh, connects to the just the simple link output on the uh, output coil. Supposed to load uh, between a 50 and a 500 ohm antenna. I wasn't able to get a very good load on my dipole, and with the very low power in the microwatts, I was never able to even see a measurable signal on a 100 watt slug on my Bird 43 watt meter. So it's not uh, very well designed. It could be redesigned a little bit better to have a higher voltage 180 volt supply for the transmitter and 45 volts on the receiver and keep the filament on all the time, and then it would be actually a possibly very usable little transmitter and might be worth uh, investigating down the road. But I hope you enjoyed seeing this, uh, the Westkit BN1 Novice Transmitter Receiver from 1954. They're not very common. You'll probably never see another one again. And I really want to thank my friend Roy, KA7NGT, for letting me borrow his unit to experiment with and to make this video. So thanks for watching. This is Dave, W7UUU, and Dave's Radio Shack.